Hey YouTube, I was overlooking something in the dark table manual uh, and I decided to read the whole damn thing, which was really fun. Um, here are seven things that I found that I didn't know before that I think are really great uh, around the user experience and the usability of dark table more than editing in specific modules. But here are seven things that I found in the manual that I didn't know before and are not immediately obvious. So. Tip number one, in Lightroom, if you hit tab, you get rid of all the side panels and you are just left with the preview. And things still work in here, like you can still do starring, you can still do coloring, um, you can still go to dark table and edit that image and when you come out it's still there and tab brings back the normal view. Super useful for when you are uh, assessing images, maybe going through a bunch of images and deciding which ones you're going to work on. Uh, really awesome on laptops to go between this cluttered view and a pure view where you get a little bit more screen real estate for what you're actually doing. Tip number two, if you click Z, whatever the mouse is on, zooms in full screen. Super useful. Additionally, when doing that, you can still do starring and coloring. Tip number three, a variation of that, Control Z or Control Z for my friends back in Europe. Control Z zooms in but also shows which areas are in tight focus, which is, again, pretty useful going through different images. Now, both is that you cannot star or color when pressing Control Z, but what you can do while controlling Z or while pressing Z is you can use the left and right arrow keys to go through more images. So say you're evaluating three that you think are similar and you want to choose which one you can do that right here so three tips in Lightroom the tab Z and control Z now let's have a look at inside darkroom first one which is pretty intuitive and not unusual is that you can drag this box around if you were zoomed in to move the zoom on your image. Number uh, blah, 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 five, I did not realize here is an edited, here is an image that has a history stack. I did not realize that you can do a control C on that to copy the history stack and control V to copy it somewhere else. That is very cool. So the same kind of operations as over here in this history stack module. Now the manual says that you can also alt control C and alt control V um, and that should, as far as the way I read the manual, that should do this. Uh, I've got to get an edited one. That should bring up something like this, a dialog to select specific things in the history stack, but that does not seem to work. Trying it again, control, alt, control, C does not do anything. Alt, control, V does not do anything. So I don't know if that's a bug or if it's a keyboard mapping weirdly on my machine or if it's a keyboard mapping on Linux that's not default I don't know but that does not work um, here's one that is not very useful you may never want but it's interesting to know it's there I had not noticed this that you can set up your entire module visibility and then save that as a preset. Now, I'm intrigued by that mostly for these YouTube videos because 
uh, one the next video I'm gonna make is going to be th like the minimum modules that you should get to know before moving forward so that'll be really useful I'll set that up using this and then I'll save that as eg YouTube tutorial um, and I can switch back to my own personal at any time um, there are other places I think that might be useful for example maybe a black and white versus color that just impacts the presets or I, um, impacts the favorites um, or me personally if I'm doing indoor sports versus studio my favorites are fairly different I don't know that I'll go to the effort but it's something I learned that I didn't realize before um, and the last one that I hadn't realized let's see Tip number seven let's just do exposure so I often use the scroll wheel like this let's use something that's super visible like that so scroll wheel goes up a certain amount if you press shift it multiplies the scroll wheel impact by a factor of 10 which is configurable it could be five if you want um, look at the manual to see how to do that additionally control minimizes it by a factor of 10 so instead of that scroll wheel normal and this is scroll wheel with control so where would these be useful definitely perhaps a shift here because that's a fairly high granular change but perhaps a control here which is much more of a fine-tuned thing so those are seven things I read by reading the manual in an age where nobody reads manuals anymore and kudos to Darktable uh, the developers of Darktable for making this user experience so intuitive that I think it's the it's the first time I've really done a deep dive into the manual apart from going there for some very specific things like uh, just things that didn't make sense to me and I thought why is this done this way that's why I've gone to the manual before 20 years ago the first thing you do when you buy anything or use anything is uh, read the entire manual in this day and age we as consumers expect things to be so intuitive that we don't need that manual but I still recommend you have a look so that is that is my YouTube video for today take care